Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. And another heavyweight news mashup video today, starting with Deontay Wilder. Another day, another explanation from Deontay Wilder about something to do with the rematch with Tyson Fury, which occurred on February 22nd, 2020, and of which we know that Deontay Wilder lost badly in that one, stopped in the seventh round. So of his injury in his ear, he claims that Tyson Fury used his nails. So he says, I haven't heard valid proof of how the gloves flap all the way back, why your hands were in the middle of the glove, why did my ear have scratches deep inside my ear, because your nails. It's so many different facts and proof that we have, but it just shows the greatness of it. And that is Deontay Wilder, his statements to the Last Stand podcast and obviously made a number of um, different statements um, about his career, other issues, potential fights in that interview with Brian Custer. Moving on, Eddie Hearn, the promoter for Anthony Joshua, says that they won't wait for Tyson Fury, especially if he has another interim fight. And these comments have been made in the context of Tyson Fury, his December the 5th fight being cancelled. Potential mediation with Deontay Wilder may be leading to a third fight with Wilder, the fight that Tyson Fury had said he was walking away from. Bob Arum has said, well, if they have to fight um, Deontay Wilder, they will. So of that whole situation, Eddie Hearn says that's the key date in the heavyweight calibre because if AJ can beat Pulev, we want to make that fight immediately for the late spring, early summer of 2020. 21. We won't wait around for him to have another interim fight. The path was very clear. He was fighting on December 5th. He told everyone he was fighting no matter what. And then we're fighting on December 12th and then fighting each other. It's not we'll fight on December 12th and then you'll fight in March and we'll see what happens. We've got the Usyk situation to sort out. As soon as we finish our fight, Usyk will be saying, I'm mandatory now. Come on, WBO let's go so straight after our fight we need to know do you want that fight next or not so in terms of the situation i mean as a cynical and long-suffering boxing fan i had just figured that that fight wasn't going to happen next anyway but uh, i know that there was a lot of optimism that it potentially would happen in the first half of 2021 that there may be some sort of undisputed showdown I was sort of thinking perhaps it would be towards the back end of next year at the earliest and perhaps that will happen. We'll just have to see. It's not very clear what's going on with the Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder situation. Some mediation to see if the, a third fight is going to happen, if the contract is still valid. And Anthony Joshua, as Eddie Hearn described, does have a situation with Alexander Usyk. Remembering the WBO first called that fight for Usyk at the end of 2019. Uh, it was in a day also within um, the IBF mandatory Kubrat Pulev being caught. Obviously, we know things have been slowed down and delayed because of uh, COVID-19, etc. But at some point, that fight is going to have to happen or Joshua will have to vacate the belt. Meanwhile, Tyson Fury is confident that he will beat Anthony Joshua if and when he faces him. So talking to Capital Breakfast with Roman Kemp, he says, I'm 100 million percent confident I can beat him. I'm on a 12-year undefeated career so far, two-time heavyweight champion. So yeah, the first man in history to win two heavyweight championships without losing a fight, which is very unusual. I'm 100 percent confident I can beat anybody I go into the ring with, and that's why I'm world champion. And meanwhile, Tyson Fury, and you may have seen this already, uh, he has uh, had a lucky escape. It was almost lights out, and literally it was a light out of the roof, uh, almost falling on Fury's head, having to uh, sort of sway and evade the light coming down. Um, quite an interesting sort of situation. So uh, obviously they'll be fixing that one up uh, and a close shave for Tyson Fury. 
The undefeated rising prospect Tony Yoka, who was also the former Olympic champion, may in fact squeeze a third fight in for 2020. And of course, that is if he beats Christian Hammer and comes in unscathed. So recently, the um, EBU ordered that Yoka face uh, Peter Milas for the EU title, not to be confused with the European title, which is on the line for Dubois and Joyce. The EU title is different. Yoka and Milas ordered to fight for that. So the purse bid did actually end up going ahead, despite um, Yoka having a fight with Christian Hammer later in November. So it has been won by the Yoka side. The fight um, will be held potentially in December. And this is, you can see here on screen, this is from the EBU website. The purse bid was won for 271,000 euros. Quite a big chunk of change uh, given the sort of level of the fight. Peter Milos, an undefeated and talented Croatian heavyweight. Um, if that fight ends up happening, um, if Tony Yoka gets past Christian Hammer, is unscathed and gets into the Peter Milos fight, wins that as well. It would cap off a really good year for Tony Yoka and would easily be the best year for any prospect in 2020. Bearing in mind, if he gets through a Milas fight, wins that, beats Christian Hammer, and also he recently fought Johan Duopa, squeezing three fights at the back end of the year and uh, good, tough, sort of meaningful fights, that would really be quite an achievement. And despite COVID-19 having delayed his sort of entrance into the US market through his top rank deal, he's going to be getting um, some meaningful rounds, unlike some other prospects who are either sitting or just having tune-up mismatches. Meanwhile, Philip Hergovich is getting increasingly frustrated that he can't get the fights that he wants, saying that these guys are not real fighters. They are Instagram boxers. They don't want to sign a contract. They just want to post a bunch of BS on Instagram. I'm training hard every day. I want to fight everyone. That's why I named everybody in the division. Put down your phone and sign the contract. I want all of them. Philip Hergovich is looking to have uh, his third fight for the year in December. Uh, opponents still to be announced, but that was a fight that was um, sort of signaled um, when he returned to action uh, a couple of months ago. So he's had a couple of tune-up fights uh, so far. One was a very low-level one. Uh, more recently fought, fought Rydell Booker, the sort of fading journeyman, and potentially back in the ring in December 2020. And just rounding out this heavyweight news mashup video, so the WBO rankings for October, yes, October, they are now out. For some reason, the WBO has fallen a month behind its regular schedule, but the rankings for October just published, and we have um, Frank Sanchez, you can see here, he's at number seven, uh, Zhili Zhang, he's at number nine, and also uh, Philip Hergovich at 12. All of those guys uh, on the back of recent fights and wins have climbed two places apiece in the, this month's rankings. The rest of the rankings, relatively little movement, apart from Derek Chisora, who's fallen to number 15 following his recent loss to Alexander Usyk, who, if you look at the top there, you can see he's uh, now got that intercontinental title that Chisora had. But what do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.